and welcome back to Smith Party of Six. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how I schedule our homeschool year. So grab some coffee, tea, whatever you're into, and uh, let's get into it. So we use Ambleside online for the majority of our homeschool curriculum. Uh, if you don't know, it's a Charlotte Mason curriculum. Their book list is completely free. A lot of the books even that are on the list are completely free online, um, sometimes even on audiobook or cheaper on audiobook at least. We do end up buying a lot of our books, as you can see uh, some of our bookcase back here going on, uh, just because we like to have actual hard copies. It just works better for us, but you don't have to if that's not usable for you. So Ampleside actually makes a lot of this easier. They have available on their website documents that you can print out for your entire 36 week schedule. Now, when you first get it, not everything on there is going to be filled out like mine is. I always download mine as a document that I can actually edit. And so I've gone in and filled in all the different things that we're going to do. Certain things on there will be blank, but for example, things like history, natural history, literature, poetry, the majority of those types of things are gonna be filled in. And then you just have to go in and decide what else you want to do and you can put that in there. Last year, I printed the PDF version and then I wrote things in as we went. I didn't like that way quite as much, so this year I decided to go ahead and type stuff and it made it a lot easier. So when you download your sheet from Ambleside, it'll look a little something like this. This is the year four schedule. So this is the year that Elijah's going through right now. He's in fifth grade doing year four of Ambleside. So you'll see all of the Bible readings that they intend for him, the history, the geography, natural history, literature, poetry. And then there's a second page of other subjects that they would do throughout the week, either daily or once per week. Down at the bottom, you can also see where they have a free read section. Those are things that aren't actually included as part of the curriculum, but are good books for children of that age group to read. So this gives us our basic outline and then we can customize from there. So I really take those sheets from Ambleside and completely transform them and make them our own. I put the dates that we'll be doing things at the top. I also move around any of the readings that would make more sense for us in a different place. For example, um, getting a certain chapter of something done before we go on a break. So I just kind of play with things in that way. I also fill in anything that's not already filled in for me. We can talk more about that here in a minute. Uh, there are certain subjects that I add or take away. We'll also talk about that. And I completely scrap what they do for Bible and put in our own. So really what we're doing when we are doing all of this beginning of the year planning, we are making sure that the rest of our year is gonna go a lot more smoothly. So for example, Charlotte Mason mentions focusing on one tree throughout the entire year and drawing it multiple times throughout the year uh, to see like kind of what happens with the tree over time. And I didn't wanna forget to do that this year because we didn't end up doing it last year. And so I actually put that into um, our different nature study lessons down here as a family. So for example, all of the green highlights that you see as I go across there are all where we are drawing our specific tree that's out in our backyard. So there's just different things like that that I don't want to forget to do. And so I'm gonna put them on the schedule, just all of it to make sure that it gets done. Now at the bottom, like you saw, there is the free read section. For that, I do go ahead and highlight uh, just any books that we already have in our personal library. So it kind of stands out more to my kids like, oh, hey, we already have this one. I'm sure that there's a lot of other ones on there that we can find in our local library too, but that's just what I did at least for the ones that we already have. I also will go ahead and put in dates like you saw previously, and I will highlight light the week before we are getting ready to go on a break. So for example, our term two actually has two breaks in it, one for Thanksgiving and one for Christmas. And so I went ahead and highlighted those weeks so that I know, hey, we're about to have a stopping point. It just kind of helps my brain out as we're going through the year. And things like handwriting, copy work, timelines, for those, I don't necessarily have to have a specific plan. So I just put a checkbox there because you might've seen from last year's video of my weekly planning, as I'm going through, I like to check off 
the things that we've already accomplished so that I know if there's anything left over from the previous week that we still need to do. So that's just a spot where I can go ahead, check the box as we go. You'll also notice that I did not fill in math for any of my kits. That's because really with the math that I've chosen this year, I found it on Simply Charlotte Mason. It is the Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic Series. So for what they're doing with that, it is really completely at their pace with just however much they get done in the amount of time that they're given. It is a really very Charlotte Mason way of doing math. And so I didn't fill in anything and we'll see how that goes. If you've been around, you know that we've had some issues with different math curriculums. So here's to hoping that this one fits. I don't know, we'll find out. There are also certain subjects uh, on the schedule that I took off, mainly being Plutarch, I think was really the one that I took off. I just don't feel like we're ready to tackle that quite yet. We're gonna have pretty full days as it is already. You know, I've literally never read Plutarch. I definitely want them to uh, as time goes on in our homeschool, but I just don't feel like we're quite there yet. So we're gonna hold off on Plutarch at least for one more year, but I went ahead and took that off for this year. There are other things that I added. So for example, at Alexia's year, they don't have grammar on there quite yet, but she's at the age where she can go ahead and do grammar. And so I added grammar onto her schedule. I also added a separate literature slot onto Arwen's because she's really wanted to read the Little House series. The older kids have read a few of the books off of there and it's one that I've really enjoyed reading with them. And so she wanted to kind of have that same experience with me. So I put that onto our schedule so that she'll also be doing the Little House series with me. So really, this is super customizable. Even though they've laid out the whole year for you, you can still play with things and kind of edit to suit your homeschool. Don't feel like you have to stick with certain things on there. Now, I will say that I know that they put a lot of time and energy into deciding what actually makes the cut. And so the things that are there are really, really worth at least trying out. And if you try them and then don't like them, then that's totally fine to take them off. But most of the things that are going to be on the schedule are really, really good. I'll go ahead and mention also another edit that we did last year. We started off reading um, Pilgrim's Progress, just like the regular Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. And Elijah was older than Lexi. I had them combined to do it. And at the time, Elijah was perfectly fine with the John Bunyan version. Alexia really kind of needed another year. I shouldn't have combined them like I did in that. And so instead, Alexia will start reading the John Bunyan version this year. We're gonna go ahead and give it another go. Last year just wasn't quite time yet. So you can also pay attention to things like that as you get started, realizing that especially if this is your first year doing Ambleside, whatever you choose to do doesn't have to be set in stone. We can totally be flexible. We can switch the plan around kind of once you get through, like maybe try the first term. And if something is just really, really not clicking, then kind of reevaluate there and say, okay, maybe we'll hold off and read this over summer or maybe we just won't read this at all, or maybe we'll read it next year. That's up to you. And that's really the beauty of homeschooling is that you do get to edit like that. My last edit that I'll mention is Bible. I completely scrap everything that they have on there for all the years of Bible because we do Bible together as a family. Now, again, I know that they have their reasons why they choose the things that they do. And they even say that they expect that families would have a separate Bible time altogether. For us, it just works to go ahead and do Bible in the morning together. And we're doing so many different things for Bible that it doesn't feel like I really need to stick to their schedule with Bible. So that's just something that I completely take out and we do our own stuff. And that's actually gonna be a separate video that I make of how I do Bible with our kids. I don't use any curriculum or anything like that. And it's worked out really well. A lot of people comment on how much Bible knowledge that they do have. And so I'll go ahead and pass that on to you guys sometime within the next few weeks. So for any of the things that Ambleside does not fill in readings for me, I'm just going to kind of go through, see how much we need to cover, and I'm gonna break that down into manageable bite-sized pieces throughout the year. So for example, for our nature study, it just gives the basic what we're going to be studying. So for term one, we're gonna be studying uh, trees, shrubs, and vines. And so I went to that section in the handbook of nature study, 
which is this handy dandy little guide right here. Um, this book is not for your children. It is for you and it helps you as you are teaching them nature study. It is super helpful. I love reading the sections in here and just it gives me a nice outline so that I know what I need to cover basically. So I went to the section in here and I looked over everything that could be covered. Now there's lots of different types of trees that it goes into and so I chose some main ones that we could find easily here in our area. So first of all we'll be doing like parts of trees things like that very very basic and then we'll branch out no pun intended to do specific species of trees. Uh, so for example, some of the ones that we chose from our area are the elm, the willow, cottonwood, ash trees, the dogwood, apple trees, horse chestnut, oaks, hemlock, sugar maples. So we're going to go into all that kind of stuff throughout the year. Now I had to think about, okay, how many times a week are we actually going to do a nature study lesson? And then I also, of course, wanted to fit in on certain weeks doing a drawing of our own tree out in our backyard that we're gonna be drawing throughout the whole year. And so I just thought about all those different things and started plugging in where I thought um, things might work. I also have the Julia Rothman books, a few of them at least, and one of them is Nature Anatomy and it does have trees in there. So I kind of flipped through that and if there were certain pages that would go with what we were talking about, then I even typed that in to include as well. There's a few really nice tree poems in the Handbook of Nature Study that I wanted to kind of read as we're doing our nature study lesson. And so I plugged those in throughout the term in places that would make sense for those as well. So basically any of the subjects that I don't have already laid out with what Ambleside has given me, I'm going to go through and do that myself. Just look at the breadth of what we want to cover. I'll cut pieces out if I need to, pieces that we won't be able to get to like some of the types of trees. And then I will plug in where they make sense based off of about how many times I wanna do that thing per week. If you're following their picture study rotation, each of the artists has six prints that you will be studying. Uh, I did a reel on our display for that over on Instagram if you want to go check it out. But our first painter that we're going to be studying this year is Tintoretto. They give, like I said, six prints of each um, and there's 12 weeks. So in the first week, we will study the painting. We'll look at it. I'll read a little bit about it for them and just like really look at the details, give them time with it. And then in that second week, we're gonna go ahead and recreate that painting. A lot of times that's just literally sitting down and painting. That's their favorite thing to do. Uh, but for a few of them last year, they wanted to be a little bit more creative and uh, recreate it with their bodies. So they would get into position as quickly as they could all together, figure out who was gonna be who in the painting and then have me snap a picture Picture, and I got to put those in their portfolios too. So that's just kind of a different fun way to do it if there's a certain week that maybe painting something isn't gonna work out for you. But that's how we set it up. So it'll be uh, picture study, imitate, picture study, imitate, picture study, imitate all the way throughout. I also went ahead and had them choose their handicrafts that they wanted to do and spread those out throughout the year. I'll talk more about what we're gonna do with that sort of thing in a curriculum picks video that I'm working on. Um, so that'll be out soon too, just everything that we're gonna be doing this year, all the different subjects and books that we're using, all of that. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. And then each of like our hymns and folk songs we do for roughly four weeks each. So once I have everything how I want it um, on the document, then I'm gonna go ahead and print those out and I just tape them together because you have term one, you'll have two papers for term one, two papers for term two. And so I want each of the things for term one on their own big long sheet. So I can just look down and see everything for the entire week that they're gonna need to do. That's gonna make it super easy when I go in to plan each week of school and put it into my simple plan planner like this. So then I can just look straight down on each of the weeks and say, okay, these are the things that we want to accomplish for this week. And then I can transfer them straight into here. Okay, so other than getting these big, nice long schedules ready for the year, I also prep some other things in a Google Drive 
folder that I have for planning for each year. So I have one in there called 2023, 2024 school year. And I will use that as kind of like my hub as I'm prepping everything. So I have a folder for exams in there, a folder for maps, and that will be divided by year because there are certain maps for year one, certain for year two, three, four, all of that. I also have another folder in there right now for like little Duke coloring sheets, just kind of so they're all in one place. But that's also where I will have kind of like my master planning spreadsheet that I use. And then I will drop in any of the different documents that I want to use for the year too. So like I have ones for all of their recitation poems that I can print out. I made all of these things on Canva and then I had them printed at our local library. We really wanna get a laser printer for next year because there's just so many different things that I like to print. But anyways, we'll do one for the recitation poems. Um, and then I have sheets about each of their poets and their artists and composers so that they can have those as well in their student binders. And then any of the other things that we'll use throughout the year, um, like I use certain sheets that I made for their narrations for Burgess Animal Book, uh, Lexi will use some for Secrets of the Woods and the animals that she is learning about in there. For some of their books, if there's going to be a lot of characters that they need to remember, I print off these little character cards and they can make a drawing, write the name and like something like short about the character that helps them remember who it is. And then all of these different things can go into their portfolio at the end of the year as well. So this is kind of helping with record keeping and it's just having you ready for the entire year already. Uh, also like any of their map work. So Arwen is working on the United States this year and memorizing where all the states are. She has started that last year and the older two finished that last year. Uh, so that's what she's doing. They're working on West Virginia map work this year, kind of focusing in on our area. So they all have uh, different maps and things that need to go into their binders or that would be good for them to have to write on. So I wanna get just all of that stuff ready. I will say when you're using Ambleside, the forum is a super good place to find where other moms have previously made files like this. Sometimes on the Facebook group as well, if you're not in there um, and you're using Ambleside, definitely go check it out. It is a wealth of information. All right, and that is how I plan our school year. Uh, even though I compiled all this in a nice, fairly quick video for you, just know that this does take several weeks worth of planning usually for me. So don't rush it. Don't feel like you have to get it done super, super quick. I know that we're getting obviously a lot closer to when people are wanting to start school. I am also gonna try to put the links for some of the files that I created down in the description box. So if you're interested in any of those, you can head down there to check those out. All right, if you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more stuff like it, and I will catch y'all next time. Bye.